You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to your, the kickoff of 2019 Marriage Takeover, the Woo-hoo. body of one, one time, one time, one time. Um. How's it? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. To everyone that is in attendance on today, hallelujah. It is going to be awesome kickoff time. I know that the game is on, but we do appreciate your sacrifice. Huh? Can we mute the game? I think we can go ahead yeah. in the background. But, yeah, we can. Okay. <laughs> go, go, go ahead on. Finish. I got to mute. Hold on. Just go ahead. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy New Year to everybody. And welcome... I am almost positive we are, let's see, where are we streaming live from? I know we're on YouTube. I'm praying y'all can see us on the Facebook Live. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Bishop, can you confirm? We, we started a new software, y'all. We're trying to step up our game just a little bit. Just a little bit. So we uh, started a new uh, software, OBS, and... We are trying to make sure we are on YouTube live streaming. So if somebody can just confirm that they can see us, that they can hear us, I don't see us. So I don't think that we are live. And I want to make sure that we are getting out to you guys live. Let's see here. So what's been going on in the new year? Huh? I'm excited. We are today going to be talking about there's a lot going on. Um, I want to start off with prayer. That's exactly what we need to be doing, is starting off with prayer. So, God, we thank you. Lord, we honor you. We bless you. Yeah. We magnify your name just because you're a great God. You're a great king. And, Lord, you are the Lord of all. And we thank you, Lord. We honor you. We bless your name just because you are God. Yeah. We bless your name, God, just because you're magnificent, because you are holy, Uh because you are righteous, God. And we honor you, Lord. We bless your name just because you are an amazing God. Yes, you are. Lord, we thank you, God. We honor you. And we just ask that you would be with each and every individual that's listening, that you would be with each and every individual that will listen in the future, and that you'll be with the families that are affected by the federal government shutdown, that you would have your way, that you would be magnified through each and every one of them, Lord, that you would just continue, Lord, to have your way, God, that you would rule and reign in their lives, that you would let them know that you are God above all gods, that you are the God above every shutdown, that you are the God that will provide every need, that Mm -hmm. will meet every need, that will show them, God, who you are in this particular time, this season, this place, God, we magnify you, Lord, we honor you, God. Yes. We declare that your name is great above every situation, yes. above every circumstance in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, God. God, we ask that you continue to meet the needs of our your people on today. Yes. That you would continue, God, to meet the needs of every marriage, of every relationship on today, God. You continue, Lord, to have your way. Yes. That you would continue to move, that you would continue to guide in Jesus' name. Jesus' we name. We honor you and we ask that you would just be with the broadcast, that you would just continue, Lord, to have your way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How's everybody doing today? Happy New Year once again. Um, I tell you, it's, it's crazy how you just try and get everything going. Um. We, I thought we were there already. I know. I thought we were there. We were really there, you guys. Because it's on. It's moving. But I don't know where it's moving at. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, but without further ado, yeah. I wish to talk onto Facebook just so we know we're on Facebook. Right. That's where it's at, right? No, the top one is not. That one should be on Facebook, and that one should be on the YouTube. This one? Yes. I don't see it. No, I said that one should be on the U- Hi, that one should be on the YouTube. Okay. So, um, no, Larry. 
we trying to get it because we we I'm looking at that we have a couple people that's trying to get to the Facebook thing, uh, and so just want you to know we're there. So you have both of them on YouTube. <laughs> And we're going to bless the Lord because he's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. No, this is just, these are just some, some kinks we're trying to work out. Hallelujah. And so <laughs> it's funny. We we are, we are doing our best. Hallelujah. Y'all praying with us. Pray with us. Pray with us. Because... Uh, Okay, well, while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and talk, we're going to do our announcements just to let you know what's coming up. Don't forget, uh, um, don't forget next month, uh, if you're engaged, married, or quote-unquote complicated, hey, join us live here in the uh, Maryland area in Oxon Hill, Maryland. Uh, we'll have the details up soon. Um, it will be on, on February 16th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we're going to have a good time, fellowship, and we're going to enjoy one another and hit okay. And we're going to, um, and we're just going to see what thus says the Lord. We're going to have fun and enjoy, enjoying it as well. Turn to the side there, turn it back. Just no, 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 no. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up, baby. Yeah. Oh, I got a hook back though. <laughs> turn to the side, not turn it back. There you go. Boom. Make sure you hook it up. Yeah. Day. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh-uh. Don't. There you go. So, welcome. We <laughs> we got action. <laughs> we got action. So, um, so for today, boom, there we go. So, therefore, so now for today, it's it's going to be an awesome time. There's been some things that's been going on that has caused us to kind of look at a few stuff uh, because of how things have been going, things that have been um, taking place, things that's going on around us. And, you know, um, oh, that's why I have you up here. And so the certain things that's been going on that we kind of recognize has been slightly a little bit that, you know, Trying to see, I say trying to see, but we see the effects of marriage. Uh, we see the effects that it has on marriages. And understand one thing is that, man, I'm going to tell you, the enemy is busy. The enemy is busy. And we have got to make sure that we continue to say that you and your wife or, or your spouse, your husband, you continue to stay united as one, unity, 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 unity. And so in this, it is literally for us, this is the year of takeover. And takeover, you know, I'm taking back everything yeah. that the enemy has taken from me. And so in that, I want to shine some light. There are a few things that I would like to talk about. One, but one thing in particular or that we want to talk about, we <laughs> thought about this thing, but then we were just like, okay, God, we just, we want you to just have your way with it. Because when you come to understand, when you are in your young years, is when the enemy want to come in to deter you from what God has already placed ahead of you. Right. And so the more that he can cause you to not look towards where God is taking you, he's doing his job. And so when I looked at, <laughs> I was, um, how do you put it? I just stumbled upon this whole R. Kelly thing, right? Right. Right. And to see how to see these at that time where these um, girls were young, but now they're in their adult years. Now it's like, okay, how if your spouse was mistreated as a youth, how does that affect your marriage? Right. And so we kind of want to look into that because one thing I do want to put out there. We are not licensed counselors. We are not. But we have been through enough, and we're just shining our um, wisdom on you all because, I don't say you all, but we're just shining our wisdom because, like we said in the beginning, 
uh, is that this is where God wanted us to be uh, to be a blessing. Amen. You got anything that? Yeah. No. 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 I was just gonna say just because it's real, and I think that the young lady is coming forward, which is a, a horrible and a tragic story. And one of the things young we didn't want to do. That's what I said, young ladies, I'm sorry, Sorry. young ladies, what we didn't want to do was kind of jump on the bandwagon of the trend. Right. So we always wanted to make sure that whatever we're doing, whatever we're saying, that it's going to offer value. Right. And it's going to be able to um, affect marriages in a way that's going to do some change. Right. To where it's going to build your marriage. It's going to build you as an individual. It's going to make you a better person. Right. And so with this, it's a matter of, so now we have these young ladies that are in this situation, and just from me, being sexually abused when I was younger, how does that now, that carries with them for the rest of their lives. Right, right. And so we wanted to open this platform up to have that conversation and say, so what do you do when you it's have a spouse, yes. a spouse who has been hurt? If you are engaged mm-hmm. to somebody who has been hurt, what's going on, Jeff? <laughs> if you have a spouse, you are engaged to somebody who has been hurt sexually in the past, how does that affect your marriage? How does that affect yes. your relationship? Uh, and, un- and understand, this is it's not just for women. It's just that we recognize right. that it happens to women because when it happens to men, we don't come out. Because even though, like, uh, I remember talking with <laughs> I remember talking with my brother when he was over in Iraq. I mean, even in that time, men were being sexually assaulted. So how do your how do you cope with your spouse that is battling that issue? Because every a lot of people want a lot of us want to keep it quiet, keep it hush hush. But then, even if we do talk about it, we still don't know how to bring it out when it comes to our spouse, or we don't know how to even deal with it right. when, we, when it comes to our spouse. So we're just gonna talk about us, right? Yeah. Let's get it started. Let's talk. It. Wow. Because I can't. It's like we're just gonna talk about us. <laughs> no, we're not. No, we're not talking about us. We are talking about everybody. Hallelujah. So we, I mean, we're gonna talk. It'll be a blessing to everybody. But here's one thing that I don't ever, ever want to be in a position of is being able to offer something, or try to offer something where I haven't been affected or where I have not. Um, experience the difference uh, or the change because right. the reality is, is unless I'm in that situation unless I've experienced something sometimes those people really don't they won't listen to you unquote unquote because you don't understand what it feels like to be in our position right so I know for me I, we've been married now 20 years so we were together a year and a half before we got married something like that yeah so I lost so, count hallelujah <laughs> so how it really started and affected with us was that trust Mm. That trust barrier, because here I am now, <laughs> the best man in the world, who loves me, who honors me, who cherishes me, <laughs> and I have a problem with being able to really and fully open up because I'm protected and I'm guarded because of those things that have happened to me in the past. Mm-hmm. So how that affects us is in our conversation. I may not tell him all of the nitty gritty stuff because I'm still guarded. I'm still protected. It affects us uh, sexually. Um, I know when we first got married, it affected us sexually just because there were certain things that he could not do, he could not say, and some certain things that he it, – it affected me emotionally. So that was a matter of, okay, no, listen, we can't do this. And for a short stint, there was a sexless marriage just because I didn't know how to communicate to him that I had been sexually violated, that I had been – my life had been turned upside down, and there was trauma that we couldn't necessarily connect with or talk about So it was just like, I'm not going to talk about it. It makes me angry. It makes me feel uncomfortable. And I I would just shut down. Slow down a little bit. (laughs) Sorry. I would just shut down. Let me just say this. She is still on a high. When I tell you this woman here preached that word this morning. Oh, Lord. I'm a worship center. Oh, my God. That's all I'm going to say. So she's still on a high, so I just had to say, I'm going to need you to slow down just a little bit so that people can hear what you are saying. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> y'all. It's just, can I just tell you that when you have a revelation from God, like I've been, I've been saved in the church for 20 years. Always been about kingdom, but never really understanding what that meant. Kingdom. And ah. it's, a, it's a matter of sometimes you're considered as a black sheep when you're in ministries or you're a part of ministries where they don't really understand the full essence of kingdom. Uh, And to really, really have a revelation of God that's so simple, I was just mind blown. So I digress. I'm sorry. And she preached it like that. No, I'm not sorry. 
I thank God. And for she the preached like that this morning. You hear me? Our souls <laughs> were saved. Do you hear me? But we're going to take it on right back around. So as you already know that we are some transparent individuals. I don't mind. I see the whole world is looking at. I don't have no problem with that. Oh, I need to shave. Oh, my God. Um, so but, <laughs> but listen, remember, as you grow up, your life, your everything that has been done to you, whether good, bad, or indifferent, it shaped you to who you are today. Absolutely. And there are some things that, you, that we actually carry with us. Not recognize, not recognizing that we really don't have to. Okay, heard what I said. Some things, but then there are some things that has just violated us to the core, to where we lose trust in people. Even for those that, excuse me, even those that show us what show us what true love is, we still put them in that category. Right. But we still recognize, hey, they treat me different. Amen. You got to say that? Nope. Oh, you started. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. So, um, and so when you, when you begin to look at that, when it comes to you, when it comes to your marriage, you know, because you still have, you have individuals that, um, that might've been abused in their, in like a, in a, in a relationship, but, and you got some, whether it's mentally, physically, or sexually, um, and then they have gotten free of that relationship but yet has not been totally healed. Right. And it could have been years later and you get into another relationship and you get into another relationship where it's just totally awesome, but you still deal with the issues that you had in the previous relationship. And so that's what we want to really talk about this morning because – this morning. Yeah, I'm back at church. <laughs> but this is what we want to talk about this evening because when you step into this new year, as you have stepped into this new year, I my my thing my thing is God take us higher. Yeah, take us higher. I don't want to be at the same place as I ended last year in this following year. So take us higher. And so how we can get higher is that when we lay aside every weight. The scripture tells us, Paul said that I lay aside every weight that was so easily beset us. Hold on, let me pull it up for you real quick. Uh, 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 oh, is it Hebrews? Are you serious? I thought that was somewhere else. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. Are you serious? I'm thinking it's somewhere else. Um, so understand that when you lay aside, it's not saying that it's easy because sometimes you know how you can get comfortable with, ah, here we go. Um, you can get comfortable with carrying a weight so long to where it's like it just becomes a part of you. You don't leave. You don't leave nowhere without that weight. Uh, in Hebrews twelve and one, verse twelve. I mean, chapter twelve, verse one. It says, "Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside." every weight, and the sin which do so easily beset us. What is the sin for what was happened to me? It, the sin is the unforgiveness. That is the hardest part. You got something to share on that? No, 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 no. Really? You're great. I'm reading the comments. I'm sorry. I'm so... Ooh, I'm I need <laughs> somebody pray. I told you we're trying to get to another level here on Jesus. <laughs> You're doing great. So... Hey, uh, listen, where, where did I leave off at? Mm. Ah, the sin which do so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Remember, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you're married to. There is still purpose in your vows. There's still purpose in your unity. There is still purpose that God has destined for you and your household, for you and your spouse. Right. Because when you can show the oh yeah, when you can show the devil that whatever he tried to do, it could not stop you because of the grace of God. That will continue to push you and prepare you to the place where God has for you. So what then now you're asking, how can I set aside this weight? 
So setting aside the weight doesn't always seem like it's easy, Mm-mm. but really it's just a matter of a choice, right? It's a matter of a decision. So I know for myself for years, I didn't, number one, I didn't understand where the bitterness was coming from. Uh-huh. I didn't understand where the anger was coming from. I didn't understand where the hatred was coming from. I didn't understand where the fear was coming from. Like it all boiled down to those situations that kind of evolved. And when certain things happen, you take it and you patch it up. You take it and you patch it up. And you take it and you patch it up. And uh-huh. so now it's this, this big, huge thing that you're trying to figure out, how the heck did I get here? Right. And then once you figure out how you're there, okay, now how can I get rid of this? Because I want to be a better wife. I want to be a better mom. I want to do things right. I want to be able to really love my husband and have my husband truly love me and see all of me. But it was because of the anger and the fear that I was afraid to let him fully in because I was afraid that he was going to hurt me again. Right, 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 right. And so, and so, and that's, and so that's the thing. But you, you ever notice how whenever you trying to get to another level or get to another place, it seems like the enemy would try to bring up your past to slow you down or to trip you up, that piece, that's that core, that, that's that real close thing to you. And so now, and now you try to deal with, you know, the shame of it. Because like I was, like right. I, had, like I, uh, I had stated earlier, because in conversation, it's like when you're when you are in that when you're at that place to have your uh, your innocence taken from you. That's you know shame. The enemy will try to put shame on top of that because you know you know you know uh, kind of like what they say. Oh, don't tell nobody, or you'll get in trouble. I'm gonna be honest with you. I told my daughter, I said, let everybody. T- let me. I don't care who listening. Mm-hmm. Let everybody touch my daughter. It's on and popping. Let everybody touch anything in my family. It is on and popping. I want you to understand. I will come looking. Like your boy said on taking, I have a skill. <laughs> so, <laughs> so no, I'm not trying to put no threats out there. I'm just saying, praise Jesus. Because when you, the guilt and the shame is what the enemy would try to put on you right. because of what has transpired. Remember, it's about you not knowing your full uh it's about you not knowing your your full potential that God has set for you. So check this out. I have read verse one, but I'm gonna read it again in, in Hebrews twelve. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us, and let us run the patience, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. That right there is where it all begins. Mm. And I'm just talking about when you get married, you get married in a holy matrimony, right? I'm just saying that's that's how we were. Even though we went to just another piece, he said, still say holy matrimony, hallelujah. So when we, uh, when you begin to look to Jesus, because you got to understand this, even though you're hurting, God can still heal. And right. first, I want to say this real quick to all the brothers that is, that is looking at this. I want to tell you thank you because I do know the game is on. And if you can zoom in real close, I understand. Hallelujah. I can't show it clearly because it goes against some infringements. Hallelujah. So that is illegal. We can't do that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. But it's fainted in the background. Hallelujah. So, but <laughs> understand is that when you begin to look to Jesus, I know some, you know, it's funny. God, when you're saying, God, how can I truly love my spouse when I have this shame? How can I truly give myself to my spouse when I when I'm when I have when I'm covering this when I have this hurt? How can I how can I give how can I give something that has already been taken away? Right. See, that's that's the thing. Because what I did wrong. You nothing. Oh, she touched me. Ooh. Mm. I'm sorry. I apologize. Because when you when you look at the things that Christ 
has already done. In verse 2, he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. My thing is, if you understand, let's check out what it says next. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against him, lest he be weary and faint in your mind. See, right there, that's where it is, is that we get trapped and entangled in our mind. God has already healed you. God has healed you from it. He's already, he's done these, he's, he's done these things. He just needs you to now lay aside the weight. So I do want to step in and interject just for a second because it is a decision. It is a choice. God has already healed us. But what I would want to admonish to every victim of sexual abuse is that you do go and you seek out some help. Oh, yes, Lord. Because you still need to talk about it. It's not as easy as a process as you say, um, just get over it. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. It's not that easy to just say make a decision to lay aside the weight. It's not that easy. Yes, God has healed us, but there are some things that you have to walk out. There are some things that you have to talk out. That's there are some it. things that you have to unfold and get clear with God because the reality is, is that no, it was not your fault, number right. one. Number one. The reality is that it should not have been done to you, number two. The reality is, is now because it has been done, what are you going to do with that? Mm-hmm. How are you going to carry that? Mm-hmm. So for me and myself, that's one of the things that I've used now that I've been delivered. And I understand that while it is a tool and an opportunity for me to be able to minister to somebody else who's been violated because it brings on that shame. Right. And what happens is, is when you don't get in contact with somebody and you don't actually sit and talk with somebody to really think about those different things, what the enemy will do is the enemy will tell you that it was your fault. Right. The enemy will come and it will cloud your thoughts and your mind Amen. just because the enemy is the only, the only power that Satan has is he's the prince of the air. So he's going to come through your ear gates. He's going to come through what you can hear. He's going to be able to come through the things that you can see, and he's going to mess with your thought process. Uh And so that's why the Bible tells us to regulate your mind, to renew your mind daily. daily. Uh So it's really important for you to be able to be in the presence of somebody who truly, number one, understands, who can help you, who can walk you through that in conjunction with then going through that process of truly being delivered. Right. And And also at the same time, you cannot one when you get to that place to to inform your spouse of how you were violated. That right there will also help because then you'll know that you're not by yourself. Right. Because when we dealt with it, and I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm not gonna lie. It took Jesus to hold me back. I'm just she would she would be honest with you. It took Jesus to hold me back because I was I was ticked off because of here you are being whatever, but yet you had that moment. And oftentimes we got to look at even the things that 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 the enemy was set up. Like I said, yeah. he has he he is he wants to be able to hold you so that you won't be a testimony to the other one. That he's that he was able to hold. Yep. So when you get when you but when ooh Jesus, but when you come in contact with God and He open your eyes so that you will know, yeah, God, I forgive the I forgive the individuals for for whatever the case may be. God, how can I make my marriage now solid? Right. How can I make my marriage solid? Because when you begin to make your marriage solid. Guess what people begin to say? Oh man, uh, how you get to where you at? How you do what you do? How are you able to make it through X, Y, Z? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead. And it's really important for you to know that um, to keep in perspective what the enemy's role is. And I'm telling you, when you, the more you keep this thing in perspective, yeah, the better the the more you, the clear the better clarity you'll have. Yeah. So the enemy's job is to steal, kill, and, and destroy. destroy. Come on now. 
His job is to come in and to sift you as wheat. Uh huh. Because he understands that if you understand your purpose, yes. oh. he understands what God has called you to. Uh huh. And if this thing can destroy you before you ever get there, come on now. Come on. Come on now. Then That's you. his only job. His only job. Because remember now, he's already defeated. Yes. And what we do is people of God, uh-huh. we give the enemy a lot more power and a lot more anything that he should ever have over our life. Come on. Jesus came to make, when he came and he died, he did a couple of things for us. Come on. Number one, when he died, he took back the keys of death and took the sting away from death so Come that on. we would have eternal life. Come on now. Then what he went and he did also was he destroyed Satan's power over us forever. Oh, come on now. He came and when he died, he forgave us for every sin that we committed, every sin that we're going to commit. Uh huh. So understanding that, really, he don't have no power, no will to do anything else. Come on. So what he'll do is he'll come and he'll play with our thought process. Come on. Because we don't stand on God's word like we need to stand on God's oh, word. Oh, come on, Jesus. We don't believe in God's word enough. To keep us every day. Mm. We don't believe in God's word enough for our deliverance to take place. Come on. We don't believe in God's work, his word enough to be able to manifest over our lives. Come on So now. we sit and we play around with the enemy when he's coming and he's messing with our thoughts. Mm. When we don't have, we don't have to even entertain that foolishness. Come on now. So I'm not saying that it didn't happen. It happened. Uh-huh. That's a fact. It's a fact. Uh-huh. But what's also a fact is there is help there. Yes. There is help for you to come and there is help for you to recover. Uh huh. There is help to come and even in your hurt and in your weakness for us to come and to wrap our arms around you and to cry and to weep with you mm. because it was painful. Yes. You should not have had to deal with that. Right. But then there's also a process for you to be healed, for you to be covered, for you to be delivered mm. so that you can now go uh, and help save another somebody soul. else. Come on now. That's the beauty in this. Mm. Once you get beyond the shame, that's the beauty of our ashes. Yes. Come on now. That's the beauty of our ashes. Does that mean you got to get everything right? No, no. Not at all. Does that mean you got to dot every I across nope. every T? Heck no. Nope. I'm, I said I'm, I forgot to dot a few of them and cross some myself. <laughs> but that is where you begin to say, God, I'm sorry, I messed up. Because, see, understand, in the renewing of the mind, guess what? You got to know who God, what you got to know who and what God has done for you. And we're just talking about the power of a strong man. That's all we're talking about. You see this? Because I am Mr. Right. <laughs> Get at me. I'm Mr. Boo. Always Right. Ah, okay. <laughs> Praise Lord. But guess what? We are the right. Holler at me. Why? Because we're sitting in a place where God has said, hey, thank you for recognizing that you are more than an overcomer. Right, right. You got to recognize that you are more than an overcomer. Because he says, now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit." What the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to keep your mindset on the things of the flesh. Right. Because when you keep your mindset on the things of the flesh, guess what? Then that's what that's what keeps you in the bondage. That's right. what keeps your when you when see oftentimes, you know what I'm saying, when when the husband been breaking his back, but then our wife still say, No, nah, I don't feel like it tonight. Come on, you in the flesh. <laughs> Oh, I'm up them pearly gates. You understand. You've been there. So, you know, you know all, that, all that wife that has been, you know, just doing, you know, what they do. And then it's like, oh, and then we want to be like, oh, whatever it is. But come on, man. Now you're, now you're trying to allow the enemy to come in. Because, see, this is what happens. As long as you can continue to keep whatever that past in your present as long as you continue to keep that past in your present and not try to seek help when help came knocking, because you had that moment where you said, God, I need help with this. I want to be all I can be to my husband or to my wife, but I need help with this. Help, God sent help. But you didn't open the door. You saw their face through the peephole, but you didn't want to open the door. Come on. But then you say, God, okay, I missed it that time. 
I need help. <laughs> Your help been walking with you the entire time. Right, right. But at the same time, you got to be like, okay, God, it's whatever. Why? Because I want to be better. I want to be about kingdom. If I cannot get help from this, how can I be truly effective? Because in the place of where you hurt, Amen. And the place of where you hurt becomes your ministering tool. Right. And it's okay, too, sometimes because, and I'll just be honest, and, and this is not a bash at all on the church or the ministry. So it ain't please, got nothing to do with that. We, please don't take this the wrong way. It's just people. It's people. But there are people that are in the church that don't know how to handle the situation. Oh, my God. So it's okay to go to, and I would even prefer you to go to a licensed Psychologist, go to them and talk to them about what it is you're going through, what it is you're dealing with, and have them to work some things out. Right, right. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what the Lord got set up. You know what I'm saying? Because one thing that I can tell you, if you come to me and say, hey, you know, I dealt with X, Y, Z, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm, I know somebody. Let's give them a call. (laughs) You understand, right. you understand what I'm saying? A lot of times we don't know how to put how to point the people in the right direction. We try to do everything that you know. I'm, my bad. Well, this is marriage takeover. But I understand this. <laughs> I don't want to go out of the left field. Everybody cannot handle all your issues, right? Because right. If I cannot if I don't have the education. You know what I'm saying? To help you with your mindset, the mental health, and we're gonna talk about that probably. Probably next month, but no, that's love month. We're gonna talk about something else. But anyway, but um, but you you don't have to. Is there's a difference from from being the one to help you to get help, right? And being the one that's trying to help you, knowing that I can't. If you're saying you're drowning and I don't have a um a float a floater thing right. to throw to you, what do I need to do? I need to go find one or get someone that has one. Right. But oftentimes we try to think we have it all, but when we really don't. And right. so oftentimes I'm going to tell you, if you're struggling in your marriage because of what happened in your past, please seek help because when you do, you remove the burden for you. You, re- you remove the burden of fear and shame. Yep. So then now your faith can be more, be, can, your faith will grow even the more because now you say, God, Thank you, because now I'm being freed from this. Right. And once you, once God has freed you from it, now you have a testimony. Right. And then when your spouse be like, hey, <laughs> God, uh, February is coming. I don't care what you, because what happens is, is that whenever that you're not open with your spouse, it will cause a rift. So right. say you got, say your spouse, Say, uh, say the husband or wife. I'm just going to say spouse and spouse. I hope you're fine with that. Thank you, because it, it can happen to anybody. Okay, male or female, it, it doesn't matter. But but we want to be very clear. You want to be very clear uh, that this is man and woman. Right. <laughs> right. When I say spouse, okay. <laughs> let, let, we're going to say male and female. Okay. We're just going to say that. Okay. <laughs> but when you look at the, thank you, Lord. When you look at the husband that was violated. And the wife has a high sex drive. So if the husband was violated, that's something that he may not give up on a regular. But with the wife that has a high sex drive and everything was fine because they, they still have the innocence, it's like, why can't we get this on when I want to? Well, because the husband that was violated is dealing with issues of being violated. But because, because the husband hasn't gotten to the place to say, honey, let me tell you about what happened to me. And this is where I have my struggles. So if the husband don't do that, it begin to cause a rift in the marriage. Because now the wife is thinking, am I, am, do my husband don't desire me anymore? Right. Or, you know, the enemy began to play on the mind, am I not sexy enough for my husband anymore? Do I not drop it like it's hot for my husband anymore? <laughs> I'm just breaking it down. But these are these things that the enemy began to play on her, but because of the husband is still carrying the baggage from what happened and have not said, listen, baby, 
these are the, this is why I, I believe that I'm this way. I've been guarded ever since my and ever since my innocence was right. taken from me at the age of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, my innocence was taken away from me. Right. And see when you and now that wife being so loving and caring is gonna be like, Oh my God. Because they, at this point they didn't know. They didn't have no idea because because the conversations that you all have has never went that deep. Or have or went that far back because when you normally say, "Hey, how was your childhood growing up?" You're like, "Man, listen, I was captain of the cheerleading team. I was the fastest sprint. You know what I'm saying? You get into those things, but not into the things that shaped you into who you are. Because understand this: whatever good, bad, or indifferent still shape you into who you are. Right. But when you have those moments to sit down and say, "Hey, these are the things." This is why I am the way that I am. But then now your spouse, your wife will be able to say, you know what? I understand. You know, because you, you just, you just, you, they just have that understanding. It's like, oh, because then now they could be honest and be like, I thought you just didn't like me no more. That's why I'm getting up early in the morning, going to work, and now I'm trying to get my body right. You understand what I'm saying? So now, because of you being open with your spouse, now you have just taken, you have removed a lot of burden right. from the both. So now it's, I want you now that spouse, that wife would say, babe, listen, we in this together. Because if you're broken and I'm whole, guess what? He said the two shall become one flesh. So that means if the rib is broken, that means I'm broken. Right. Right. So if I'm broken, then guess what? I got to get healed too. So I only way I get healed is you get healed. So if you get healed, now we are healed because right. the two shall become one. And so now you don't have to worry about the enemy trying to come in between your marriage because your husband ain't giving up no. Because once he's got free, you might get a whole lot of backlogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying because it doesn't matter. Even if it's even if the roles are switched, and it's the wife, your wife that had to deal with that. Even when you begin to look at abuse, oh my right. God! Because when you look at the mental abuse and physical abuse, the slightest thing that the husband do, that wife is gonna automatically think that they're back in that same place. Right. But when the husbands they have no idea. Because like me, I'm aggressive. When I say I'm aggressive, you, hey, you ought to see me coach. <laughs> I'm there. And, yo, what's going on? But the slightest moment that she felt, oh, my God, now it's no. Uh, uh, first off, let me just say this out there. She a thug. She more than a thug than me, okay? So mm-mm, don't, let this pretty, a don't let this pretty face and smile <laughs> fool you, okay? That's all I'm saying. So, <laughs> I'm not a thug. I just don't think people expect for me to be direct and to let them know that I'm not the pushover because I smile so much. Y- y'all remember, That's not a thug. Y'all remember, <laughs> y'all remember that uh, movie uh, when Tupac was like the, uh, what's it called, above the rim, when he did this and had a razor blade? <laughs> I, I think she taught him how to do that. So... <laughs> Let's just say I know I'm aggressive, <laughs> but I'm not crazy. Let me just put that out there. But, but I'm sorry. But to that, but to your, but to that wife that had that abusive relationship before, that one thing you may do, it might say, "Oh my God, now I got to be guarded." And so now they're careful with everything that they do around the house because they don't want to upset you right. or cause you to go that way. And then you're like, "Why are you all uptight? You all right? You know what I'm saying?" And now here comes the enemy trying to draw another risk. Right. In between. You you understand what I'm saying? And so these are these things that the enemy try to do because the enemy don't want you to recognize your purpose. Right. With your marriage. Because your your marriage could be to to raise up the next president. Your marriage could be you know, to the next Fortune five hundred company. Right. You understand? It's your purpose. It's your purpose. But if the enemy can riff that, then guess what? He's doing what he got to do because then now you're not being effective. Right. No, I was just going to say, that, and it's really key to have that conversation. Reverend Gwen said the communication is definitely key, and it's so key 
Like that's some of the things that we've been ministering about every month. Like that communication is key. But then what's important is you understanding how to have that conversation. Because, and then when the conversation is had, how the husband or the wife should accept that when Mm. it's on the other end. Like you have to be vulnerable enough to be able to accept that, to understand that, so that you don't crush that. Right. Because what's going to happen is the moment that I open up, right. the moment that I, I share with you the most vulnerable part of my life, right. and you destroy that opportunity, I'm not going to be in a position to where I'm going to trust you right. with my most sensitive areas of my life. That, and that's another key. So that, it's really important to make sure that you, you are having the effective communication and that the recipient that's receiving that is on the other side willing to take that and to cover and to guide. Like to really protect. Once I share that, that's that's a moment for you to step back, even if you don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Even if you don't know how to deal with it, it's a moment to say, Whoa, Wait you know, I minute. didn't I had no idea. I, had I didn't no understand. Idea. And then you, you go and you pray about how to be able to take that how to be able and to how to handle yeah. that. And I know, um, like I said, I'm a living witness that you can recover, that you can overcome and yes. then you can be a blessing to others. And I thank you, Judy, for your um for your your testimony as well, saying that, you know, she's been there, she shared it, and she's helping other people now with that, and you can do the same thing. Yes. Yes, and that's the thing, like she just said, because, like, uh, uh, and so, yeah, uh, Reverend Ross, just, Ray, Ray Ross, just like you did, you're hearing her heart, so when you hear her heart, that's an opportunity, to, like, Eric, he wanted to go, and he, tell everybody. <laughs> he wanted to draw blood, and I'm, I'm like, you don't have to go draw blood. I could have been. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sharing it because I wanted to be free of it. Right. And it wasn't until I confessed it. It wasn't until I really started having God to really sit and and use, and and say, God, I really want to spend more time with you. Like, I don't understand this, but I want to be able to help somebody else. I don't understand why I had to be that tool or that vessel but I want to make sure that I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. So that Mm -hmm. moment that we open up, and like Judy mentioned, don't ever use it against them. No. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what it is either. I don't care how they were manipulated into the situation. I don't care how they were fostered into the situation. I don't care what you thought might have happened. Right. Don't ever, ever, ever use it against them in any situation. I don't care how angry you get, because what happens is, is if you aren't in a position to be able to take that in, to hear them, to ask God how to use that, how to make sure that you're able to cover them and to guide them and to protect them and to teach them and to love on them, then what happens is, is if you can't do that, you harbor it in your heart. Right. And when you harbor it in your heart because you don't understand what to do with it or because you're angry because that happened, maybe it was in your marriage, maybe it was before your marriage, but if you don't understand how to deal with that and that explodes, mm-hmm. what, again, you're telling them is at that vulnerable moment in my life where I needed you the most, Right. my spouse, my other half, my better half, my rib, uh-huh. my right hand. Whatever, however you consider that, when I needed you the most, right. you took that information and you use it against me. Right. And it's really important that you don't do that. that right. 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 Because here, I'm going to show you. Y'all know, well, I'm a man, a man. Uh, Philippians, Philippians 2 and 3, based off of what she said, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, period. I'm sorry, but actually it's a semicolon in the scripture. But Philippians 2, verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. We just thought we're talking about within your, within your, your spouse, because with you and your spouse, with you and your wife, or with you and your husband, you know, whichever way you're looking at this. Uh, let not, it, it, you, why, if you're going to do anything to your spouse, through strife of vainglory, guess what? You are piercing your own self. You're trying to hurt her to make yourself look bad. Why are you going to think about this? Why are you going to run the car over yourself? That's just dumb. I'm sorry. Please forgive me for being frank. Sorry, I'm just being there. So, but it says, let nothing be done through strife of vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem one uh, let each esteem another better than themselves. 
So you just told me that means I need to lift you up more to let you know that you are valuable, that you are worth, that you 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 are worth something. Because oftentimes that I've come that I've come in contact with the people that have that have had those have had that happen to them found themselves not worth it. Because when when you begin when you look at certain when you look at certain people that even even how they act how they carry themselves, how they dress, how they all, a lot of times is what they dealt with, including right. including men. Right. Even when you go back to the to this, mm, I don't want to get on that piece, but it would even alter, uh, it would even, the enemy would even try to use that to alter who you really are from what God had created you to be. Right. But if all you get is, Somebody throwing it back in your face, like, come on, dog. I'm trying to get. I'm sorry, dog. Come on, baby. I'm trying to get rid of this. <laughs> so are you telling me that I can't trust you with my with with being vulnerable? Right. Come on. And see, oftentimes, even as even as us men, don't really know how to handle certain things. Why? Because we'll spend enough time praying. Right. Why? Because even a husband sometimes don't even recognize that they're the prophet, the priest. And the king of their own home. Right. And it's really important, too, to forgive. Yes. Because oh even though God. it happened, it really, um, it's important for you to forgive. I know the time is like 7.51 now. But it's really important to you forgive because when you harbor it and you carry it and you get to that point to where it's no longer affecting maybe who you are or your marriage, until you forgive. Right. That's going to be something that's going to continue to carry the weight for you. And it's not so much that you're saying, I forget what took place. Oh, no. You're not forgetting what happened. That's your testimony now. You're saying that regardless of what that thought process is, whether you are able to physically talk to that person or not, but you are saying in your mind, I forgive you for doing harm to me, mm-hmm. whether your intentions were to do so or not, mm-hmm. but I forgive you because I want to move forward. Right. I forgive you because I don't want to hold and harbor bitterness. Right. I forgive you because I want to be able to move forward in what God has for me and my for life, you. and I'm tired of carrying this burden. Right. I'm tired of carrying this weight. Right. So this is why you're forgiving. Right. You have got, that's the key, that is such the key piece because if you don't forgive, you there you are holding yourself, and that person is going on by what they're doing. Right. Because they ain't a bit more thinking about you now. Because now when, but now you begin to hinder what God is trying to give you. Because you don't forgive, you don't know what true peace is in your own, in your marriage, man. Oh my God! When you get true peace in your marriage, when you have true, pure joy. In your marriage, oh, man, it is by far the best thing ever right. to me. That's, that's me. I'm just saying because it's good to fall asleep laughing. It's not saying it's like that all the time, but it makes your, it makes your times that you may think is hard easier to cope with. Right. Because you really dug out all the trash and threw all the weight and dropped all of the weight so that you can press Towards the mark of the high call, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we just want to say, because this time went by quick. It went by really quick today. Oh, my God. But I do also want to just add, before we um, go to the closing of the session on today, um, is that God loves you. Yes, he does. Regardless of what you went through, regardless of what happened to you, regardless of what you face in your life, regardless of what your thought process is even about yourself going through those situations. Yes. God loves you. Yes, he does. And I want you to know that he loves you. Whatever screen, whatever computer this is, God loves you. Yes, he does. And I don't want you to ever forget that he loves you. Yes. Yes, that happened to you, but that does not take away God's love for you. It don't define you either. That does not define you. You are, if it's a woman, you are a woman of worth. Yes, you are. You are a woman of value. Yes. And you are a man of mm. worth and yes, a man of value. Uh-huh. And I want you to understand that. Some people think and they go through life that they don't matter, that they're in a situation and it can continue to happen to them because they go from one abusive relationship to another. Uh-huh. 
You are worth more than that. Yes, you are. And God loves you so much. Yes, you are. He loves you so much. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want you to forget that. There, There is, I don't know if it's right now, but there is a male that's going to watch this. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I pray that you watch all the way to the end, because I want to let you know, or this is just what I feel in my spirit, that when you let go of the bitterness, God is going to bring you a newness. Even though you may feel stripped right now, God is going to bring you a newness. So understand, there's something new that's going to take place in your life when you turn, or when you let it go and forgive. Don't allow the oh yeah, don't allow the enemy to hold you back anymore because there is an anointing that is on your life, and God is going to get the glory because when you forgive, when you forgive, yeah. be ready because your ministry is going to take off. Hoshata, in the name of Jesus, that's the word of the Lord. You want me to come up after that? Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I'm just, I'm just. That is the word of the Lord. And we thank you all so much for tuning in. Listen, I want to make sure, like, how do you come up behind that? What are you talking about? the word of the Lord. That's Um, just Jesus. (laughs) So don't forget, next month, February 16th, I really want to make sure that you know where to um, sign up for the Marriage Takeover Seminar. Mm. Marriage Takeover Seminar, February 16th, is going to be in Austin Hill, Maryland. Uh, registration is $30 per couple. We're going to have food. We're going to have uh, daycare. We're going to have games. And it's going to be a marriage enrichment. As much as I really just wanted it to be just, you know, fun and games and fellowship, we want to make sure that we're being a blessing to the marriages. It's a purpose so behind there's it. There is going to be a purpose behind it. So we are so excited it's the first to have of many. You. It's the first of many. If you are not in the area, you would like for Marriage Takeover to come to your city, come to your area. Hit us up. Inbox us. Let us know. Um, we'll be, you know, see how we can make it happen. We'll drive. All right. <laughs> All right. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Do you want to do the closing prayer? Sure. Let us pray. Everybody feel like praying? If you feel like praying, give me a high five. Woo. You going to do the high five? I'm looking. Ain't nobody going to give me a high five? <laughs> I think people might <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a laugh or something. Okay, just do a like. Just do a like. A just give me, give me something. Don't give me the angry face. <laughs> okay, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> we love you guys so much. I got too much. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry, but we appreciate you guys. We really do. I don't want to go over, but uh, I don't want to keep you from the game any longer. But let us pray, Father, Heaven, Lord God. We want to tell you thank you. God, we want to give you glory, God, for this time that you have set. Father, for you know, we just on the direction of what you're doing, Father. And, God, we thank you for ordering our steps on today, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, God, we pray right now, God, that the, that the testimony and, and things that were shared during this broadcast, Father, God, that it touched the people, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that they will begin to look at not just their in their household or, you know, God, whoever that you may lay on their heart that has been dealing with whatever the issue that may be that is similar to or is what we dealt with on this evening. So, God, we just want to tell you thank you, Father. Because, God. God, we come to understand that there is now no condemnation, condemnation. to them that are yes, in Christ Jesus. God, thank you. Who walks after the spirit and not the flesh, Father. And so, God, we ask right now, Father, that you continue to encourage their hearts, oh God. Yes, Lord. God, let them know that forgiveness is still, is still possible. Because, God, that's what you died on the cross for, oh God. Yes. So, God, you took all of the shame and the guilt with you on the cross. And so, God, you have made them free. So, God, I pray right now, God, that they give it to you, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, if they need to talk to somebody, God, I ask that you send the person by that they need to talk to, oh, God, to be free from it, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And, God, I pray now, Father, that even, even the marriages, God, will continue to get stronger in you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, God, we just want to tell you thank you. God, I thank you for the outcome of it all in the name of Jesus, yes, Father. Because, God. God, we come against every tactic of the enemy now. Father, we come against the spirit of division, oh, God. Father, we come against yes. the spirit of shame, God. Yes. God, we come against the spirit of guilt, oh, God. In the name, in of, the name Jesus. of Jesus. 
Father, we declare it now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father God, wholeness is what we declare. In the name of Jesus, God, that not only they be healed from it, but God, they be made whole. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we bless you right now, oh God. Father, I pray now, Lord, that you let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Yes. God, you are our strength and our redeemer. And, Father, we just thank you right now. Father, we say this prayer in your daughter and your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. I also want to thank my sister for our T-shirt. Hey, look at you <laughs> Thank you, Sissy Poo. <laughs> Mr. Um, right, get at me. And Mr. Always right. I see always. And, and we also want to thank Blog Talk, uh, When Christians Speak, Blog Talk Christian Radio for allowing us, again, to have the platform. Thank you all so much for listening. We appreciate you. We don't take you for granted. And um, we honor you, and we thank you. We really do. Please be there on next month because it is so funny because Saturday is the event, and then that following Sunday, we I'm telling you, we're going to have so much fun. That's what we're going to be talking about. So please join <laughs> in. So if you can't, if you're not in the area and you can't make it, guess what? We're going to still talk about it. So I'm telling you, it's still going to be an awesome time. So please be, be, be there if you can and check us out on next week. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. Y'all still looking? You're listening to Christian Speak Online. And we got some registration, Reverend. Broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Join us for our weekly broadcast, His Abounding Grace, with Minister Vanessa Williams. That's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. On Wednesday afternoons at 1 p.m., Join Rev. Gwendolyn Dixon for the Midday Glory Prayer Line. The dial-in number is 641-715-3580. The access code is 732-499. And Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries in Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Rev. Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work for an hour of worship, exhortation, and prayer. Rev. Ray and Friends are here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., Join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life for a Word in Season. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. First Mondays of every month at 7 p.m., be blessed with the teaching ministry of Apostle Shirley Jones on Lifeline. On third Mondays at 7 p.m., join Evangelist Louis McElwain for Adoration, a broadcast of worship and ministries on the mission field. Second Saturdays of the month, join Rev. Curtis, Rev. Novena, and Minister Jordana for Bold and Beautiful, a youth and young adult broadcast setting the world on fire with the love of Jesus. All broadcast times are Eastern Standard Time. Hey family, I want to introduce our newest broadcast that joined us in 2018, The Marriage Take Over the Body of One, hosted by Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. They will be addressing a wide range of topics that will serve to encourage you and to strengthen your marriage. So remember that's every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, The Marriage Take Over over the body of one. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a nonprofit ministry, 
We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, so all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com, and click on our donation page. Hey family, we are excited to have two new broadcasts added to the When Christians Speak Talk Radio Network. Marriage Takeover, The Body of One, hosted by Rev. Eric and Rev. Tamika Thompson. It airs every third Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our hosts cover a wide range of topics to help build stronger marriages. They leave nothing off the table. Our newest broadcast, R3, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, premieres Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will air every second Sunday of the month. Our hosts, Elston Green, Cleophas Malone, Antonio Mitchell, and Ray Rose will create a space by men and for men to have real conversations. It's time to be free, men, from false standards and the expectations of society, family, and self. You don't want to miss this first show this Sunday, October 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 